वेलकम एवरी वन टू द सेकेंड पोर्शन ऑफ द चैप्टर ऑफ द अटोमिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड दैट इज द पोर्शन ऑफ द अटोमिक मॉडल्स वी नो द नेम ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट जे जे थॉमसन इन एटीन हंड्रेड एंड नाइंटी सेवन he discovered electron and 7 years later mean in 1904 he presented the first model of atom <clears throat> a model is basically a visual display of the idea so model of atom mean it was a way to watch how the distribution of electrons and particles is there within the atom and according to this model of the j j thomson basically there is an area in atom which is positively charged now this area is positively charged and the electrons in this positive area they are distributed just like the distribution of the plums in christmas pudding and because of the resemblance of this distribution of electrons with the plums in the christmas pudding he named this model as the plum pudding model but this model couldn't get much fame then after that <clears throat> from 1908 to 1911 giger and marston performed a series of experiment under the supervision of the Ernst Rutherford actually they were trying to count the number of alpha particles emitted by a radioactive element in a specified interval of time and they were also trying to observe the penetration of the alpha particles through the metallic foils they performed an experiment which nowadays is called as gold foil experiment in gold foil experiment they used a gold foil of the thickness zero point zero 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 four centimeter why they selected gold for their experiment because gold is the most malleable metal of the periodic table and this thickness of a very 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 small value this could be obtained only by using the gold because the thickness of the gold can be reduced to any minimum desired value so that's was that's why the gold was selected now this gold foil was bombarded with the alpha particles or alpha rays and the passage of the alpha particles through this gold foil that was observed by using a zinc sulfide screen which is a fluorescent screen what they were trying to do they decided that they will count the number of flashes on the zinc sulfide screen and those number of flashes will be equal to the number of alpha particles released by the radioactive element and they will also be able to observe the penetration of the alpha particles through the gold foil they were actually counting the alpha particles but what they observed they observed that when the alpha particles are passed through a gold foil maximum number of alpha particles remains 
and deflected. They pass straight through the gold foil. But there are very few alpha particles and this very few that was one out of eight thousand <clears throat> these very few alpha particles showed deflection now the deflection was of was of two types small angles and deflection to large angles this thing that is not surprising and it was not surprising for Gigan and Marston as well but the main astonishing and peculiar feature was the this deflection to small and large angles and even later on it was explained by Rutherford these are the historic lines of the Rutherford that colliding of collision of the alpha particles with the gold file and their bouncing back was as astonishing for us as a 15 inch bullet colliding with a tissue paper and bouncing back. They made these observations, Giger and Marston made these observations and they discussed these observations with the Rutherford and Rutherford was very 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 much astonished and he made a statement that I have quoted to you people. Now how they, <coughs> they explained these observations? Why the maximum alpha particles remained undeflected? Because most of part of atom is empty. That's why the most of the alpha particles they pass straight through the gold foil. Why they were deflected? No, these small deflections again they were not very surprising. Because you know alpha particles are positively charged. And gold foil is made up of atoms that have negative electrons. So these negative electrons of the gold atom, they will attract the alpha particles and alpha particles will be deflected to a very small extent. This deflection is not surprising at all. But this deflection at large angle and even some alpha particles that were bouncing back at the same path, these two points were very, very, very much surprising for them. And what they concluded, they said that actually the gold foil is made up of atoms. And there is a central very heavy and positively charged portion in the atom which is called as nucleus. Basically the word nucleus itself means central. So these are the gold atoms. Now why most of the alpha particles pass straight? Because most of part of atom is empty. Some alpha particles, they collided with the heavy portion, central portion, and they bounced back at the same path. Some alpha particles after striking, they were deflected to large angles, and these large angles are greater than 90 degree. So in this way, the central heavy and positive portion of the atom was discovered, which was named as the nucleus by the Rutherford. And nucleus word means central. <coughs> How they concluded that this nucleus is heavy and positively charged? Now let me discuss these two points with you people. That central portion is heavy and central portion is positive. How these two points can be justified? If the central portion was not heavy, it must have flown away with the alpha particles because the alpha particles themselves they are highly energetic and the central part if that is a lighter part that will move or that will flow away with the alpha particles. <clears throat> so it means it is heavy. That's why it is 
it is not flown away by the alpha particles but the alpha particles after striking with it they are bounced back now how can we justify that it, it is positive because alpha particles are also positive particles so this heavy portion has repelled the alpha particles and that's why the alpha particles have bounced back so these were some observations and conclusions by the rutherford and his colleagues giger and marston even this gold foil experiment is called as the giger marston experiment after the discovery of nucleus no rutherford presented another model of atom that is the nuclear atom before the gold foil experiment <clears throat> this word was missing because the nucleus was not discovered at that time <clears throat> so now the nuclear atom that was presented this idea was presented by the rutherford <coughs> <coughs> sorry according to this model the electrons revolve around the nucleus in orbits circular orbits but there were some drawbacks in this model and what were those drawbacks we will discuss them in short duration of time <coughs> 